Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us with the Own Your Health Revolution Monday Morning Devotion. We are starting off our October series on a topic that I think we all need. I know I'm convicted of needing it, and it is patience. Now, we get tested with patience every single day from your drive to work or traffic, um, in your relationships, your marriage, dealing with children, your friendships, in business especially, and um, definitely at our jobs with our coworkers, teachers, and whenever I was thinking about this at our jobs, um, something that the teachers especially, I can't imagine how, y'all, how your t- patience is tested all day, every day. And um, whenever we're tested with our patients, I definitely feel myself saying this, that we often feel justified in our reaction when we're not being patient. Um, Whenever we have a sense of, I know for me, something especially is whenever my time is being wasted um, and our patients get pushed and stretched, definitely I feel justified whenever... Um, I feel like uh, my time is being wasted because for me, time is precious. Or if you're, not, if you're feeling like you're not being treated fairly, um, and, and it's just very common. I know just this weekend, um, we were tr- I, was, I say we, I was trying to be efficient at what we were doing and we, we needed to move fast. And um, a very dear person I was speaking to, uh, my husband, he was, telling me something, and um, he had a hard time putting his thoughts together because um, we needed to eat, and so anytime our blood sugar is low, we just don't think 100% um, accurately, uh, so he couldn't get his words out what he wanted to say, and my blood sugar was low, and I was irritable, and I was sitting here thinking, spit it out, i got things to do, <laughs> and so that's just one small thing of how my patience has been. Um, tested just over the last 24 hours. Um, But even whenever we are waiting to land the job or we're not getting hired and we've interviewed and interviewed um, with different places, um, I know that's been something that people have struggled with or even infertility, that's been something that people have struggled with as far as um, just be patient. because we, I know I'm irritated and annoyed, and I feel it's, like it's okay to start getting impatient. But as believers, believers in Christ, we're called to act differently um, from the rest of the world. In Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that God, or, or the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, And so being patient when patience is not deserved is part of that very difference. And the Bible calls uh, patience a fruit of the Spirit. So in Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, which means that patience is in our bodies like a beautiful apple on a tree, And and because of the Holy Spirit, we can choose to use patience. And our patience shows the unbelieving world that we have faith in God's timing, God's plan, and his love for us because we believe he knows what's best for us. I I know for me also, sometimes whenever um, we say, well, just be patient, God knows what's best, just be patient, Uh, believe in God's timing, Oftentimes, I want to act like a five-year-old child, roll my eyes and say, you know, like, oh, that's so cliche. How long do I have to wait to become more patient? And um, growing, it's like growing fruit on a tree. Growing fruit on a tree does not happen overnight. And that goes for fruits of the Spirit, too. But through God's goodness and power, we have the ability to develop perfect patience over time. And we will learn that perfect patience through the various trials that we face in our lives. And yes, when you have, when you have to put up with the super slow person at the grocery store or, um, 
what are some other things? Um, waiting for your kids because they take forever to pile into the car. Or um, for me, being patient enough to hearing someone's story, whether it's my husband trying to mention something like the story I mentioned earlier, or maybe it's my grandmother telling me the same story for the 100th time. How beautiful that could be, that, that moment, just to slow down and enjoy that moment because I might not ever have that moment again. Um, but when you have to put up with those things, I've learned that just taking a breath and being patient will help you grow this holy fruit in your heart. And be patient because you can be sure that God will avenge you when the time is right. I, have, I wrote down a Bible verse here. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in, in his way, over the man who carries out. Oh, James 5, 5, 7 through 8. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? Be patient about it until it receives the early... Until, be patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your heart. The, and then here, Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks in him. And so I also ask myself, how can I be more patient? This is something that I struggle with because not only, just like the way of the world, we want it now, but I've got things to do. And I know for myself, Action, I want, I, I want to hustle and I want action every day. So sometimes I get caught up in, okay, well, I'm just going to do more, do more, do more, do more, whenever I need to really just kind of take a breath, take a moment, and let God do it. And what I realize is every time I just sit still for a moment and look up and look to God, things are so much easier and I don't have to be running in circles. And so just take a breath and maybe close your eyes for a few seconds Count backwards from 10, and it can be tough to focus on patience um, in, in certain times because some of these times where we're trying to be patient, it's charged emotionally as well. And so to remove your brain from the frustration in the situation can help a lot, and in every situation, it's going to be different. So try not to let yourself get frustrated if you're having a hard time doing this, and the point is to keep trying. And here, I want to give you a few steps um, to help you kind of take a step back and work on your patience and work on looking to God. So the first step is to give thanks. Now, this might seem weird in a moment of frustration whenever we're asking, why God, why me, why now? But the Bible tells us to rejoice in God's will of our lives. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that means that we trust him in his timing, even when his timing means that we have to wait. And so whenever I say rejoice, I'm talking about just literally give thanks and give thanks to God for certain opportunities. Give thanks to God for um, working on your patience. And if it's hard to think of what to give thanks for, literally just be still and look around and Maybe it's for the food on your plate. Maybe it's for the flower that's growing right in front of you and the people in your lives. Find something to give thanks for and rejoice about. The second thing is look for God's purpose. So if we have confidence in God's timing, um, even if you have to keep reminding yourself that God's timing is perfect timing, then we can be reassured that he has a purpose for making us wait and for being patient. Maybe he's giving you the opportunity to talk to someone nearby. So let's put that scenario in place. So he's giving you the opportunity to maybe um, um, express love to a stranger in some way. Maybe he simply wants to strengthen your patience, which will grow that spiritual fruit and give him the glory through your actions. So look for God's purpose in everything that you're doing. And the third thing is remind yourself that God wants the best for you. Even if you're going through trials and tribulations, work on your faith by knowing, knowing in your heart that God wants the best for you. Romans 8.28 tells us that 
all things God works. In all things, let me read it here. Um, here we go. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And so we know that we are called to his purpose, and all those things include all the annoyances and the frustrations that try to suck away your patience, that all of that is working uh, for God's goodness and working for good. God wants the best for you. So just remind yourself that even in these times, God wants good things for you. So try to find God's purpose in this and give God thanks for all of this. And, and so with patience, this is kind of today's devotion kind of goes with patience and working on yourself in patience. Throughout this whole series, we're going to learn about working with others through patience um, and, and how God showed us patience. Can you imagine how frustrated God must be whenever he puts the path right in front of us sometimes and we don't take it, we don't see it, or we simply don't want that path. Sometimes it's hard. So with today and working on yourself um, with patience, I want you to, I'm going to challenge you to do three things. Number one, give thanks for the situation that you're in and the things around you. Look for God's purpose in the trial that you're in and remind yourself that God wants the best for you. So guys, thank you so much for joining in. And Glow, if I can ask you to close us out in prayer for today, that'd be awesome. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Thank you. Um, uh-huh. Lord God, first off, thank you for you being who you are. Thank you for just loving us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Um, we just pray that um, you will continue to show us how to be patient in our life, Lord, and that um, any time that um, impatience is in, in play, that we remember the, the three um the three things, which is giving thanks to you and, and looking for your purpose in the whole thing and and always knowing that um, you will always work for our good, that you want the best for us. Allow that just to become a reality in our um, daily walk. Um, and just um, we just lift up this week to you. And uh, even this... Um, message of patience will coincide with the 90-day challenge that we're facing with no grain. Um, allows to be patient enough for more creative ideas of how to eat our food. Um, because <laughs> first off, um, you know, we want we know that you want us to live longer, and we know that this will work good for our bodies. So that's two of the things, and we give things because um, you set this uh aside for us to do. So even in um, the little small things like that, allow us to be patient so we can see the big picture that you have um, in store for us. And I lift up every last one of um, the people who is on this call and in the group that you will just continue to show show up and um, be that strong power that you are and that we can always trust and rely on you always in everything. And we just give your name all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Glow. And just as a reminder to you guys, uh, we do these Monday morning devotions every Monday morning at 7.13 a.m. On our second week of October, Gloria Strait is going to be leading us in our second um, um second devotion of our series of patience. And what else do I want to say? Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, and we'll see you next Monday.